All news, all day. News Radio 1080 KRLD. It is 1120, no curfew in Charlotte, North Carolina, at least not right now. I ask again for calm, peaceful demonstrations. It is important we have a full and transparent investigation of the original incident, and we are working hard collaboratively to ensure the integrity of that investigation. And that's Charlotte Mayor Jennifer Roberts talking this morning. The city, by the order of the governor of North Carolina, is under a state of emergency. The National Guard has been activated to respond to the looting and violent demonstrations after two nights of unrest. In Tulsa, they've had protests that have been peaceful in both cases cases involving black men being shot and killed by police officers. Alex Del Carmen's at uh, Tarleton State University he heads up the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. Uh, Professor, how do police departments avoid confrontation during protests? You know, sometimes it's up to police officers and police departments to be proactive when they're not uh, under scrutiny. And what I mean by that is they have to reach out to minority communities, they have to be transparent to the community and allow for community partnerships to take place prior to this incident uh, occurring. And what that does is when the incidents do occur, then th- those partnerships then are solidified and, and, and people work together with the community to make it safer for everyone. In Tulsa, 200 people gathered the other day at the police headquarters, and it was peaceful. In Charlotte, is it bad apples? Is it bad handling of the situation? Which- I think a lot of passions and, and a lot of feelings are are coming across uh, the wires, and sometimes, you know, protesters, uh, they come from other states, and uh, they, they try to incite violence to try to make a point. You know, I, I think police officers in general will tell you that, that they protect the lives of those individuals protesting, as, as we did uh, see that in Dallas a few months ago. But at the same time, you know, when you try to incite violence to try to repair violence, I don't think that's going to heal or help out the community at all. And it's it's interesting, too. This seems to be more blue versus civilians as opposed to a racial issue. In Charlotte, the police chief and the officer who fired the uh, the fatal shot are both black. So I think in many ways, and, and I'll tell you, I've been studying racial profiling for 20 years, and one of the things that you'll see is that individual police officers, whether they're black, white, or Hispanic, or Asian, they're always going to be identified by the community as police officers first and by their race or ethnicity second. And what I mean by that is it's almost irrelevant whether or not they're of a particular race. At the end of the day, people are going to see them as police officers first. What's the next step? How do we go about uh, reconciling things and getting people to, to talk? It's hard to prevent it all the time, but I think in, in most cases it can be prevented. I think we have to have a dialogue. We have to get the community leaders to sit down at the table with police departments and be able to have an honest dialogue whereby people actually understand that at the end of the day, you know, dialogue and and peaceful resolutions are the only outcome that we should consider here. How do we get that dialogue going? Somebody has to take the lead. And, you know, whether it's the Justice Department or community leaders or even the police chiefs, they have to take the lead and simply get everyone around that table and, and let them express their frustration, their anger, their fears, so that so that the dialogue can can begin to happen. If people are not willing to take that first step, it is just simply not going to happen. That's Alex Del Carmen at Tarleton State University in Fort Worth, the police chief in Charlotte, North.